Hey, dude, far out. You found Life in the 1900s newspaper channel, where I read the actual words from vintage newspapers to you. Today, we're going to read about a day in the grooving 60s. I was just a kid in the early 60s, and I used to watch The Monkees on TV. Let me know if you watched The Monkees too in the comments below. Here we come, walking down the street. We get the funniest news from everyone we meet. sister Cindy got one of these monkeys wind up guitars for Christmas one year. I was so jealous. I wish she had kept it. It's probably worth a lot of money today. Well, let's get the fun rolling with the Lawrence Daily Journal World newspaper, which was made in Lawrence, Kansas on October 3rd, 1962. Oh, and the cost was seven cents. Judge is Mourned by Rourke, by Robert C. Rourke. The judge, whom I do not know personally, is a believer in the old-fashioned application of punishment to crime. His recent experiment in chastising the guilty dealt with a flock of teenagers who were guilty of boozing it up on the beaches, littering the sands with empty beer bottles, drag racing, and general brawling. The guilty parties were given a choice of 30 days in jail or having their ornately coiffed hairdos shorn to boot camp bristle. They were also sentenced to several Saturdays of beach cleaning. And three of the illegally boozing tribe were made to bend over in full view of about 250 courtroom spectators while a burly policeman administered five of the best to their backsides with a full forehand swing. To be forced to bend over while a stranger smacks your behind is apt to divest the victim of considerable vain glory while damaging little epidermis. And of course, the hair cropping is a touch of genius if the croppee has made a fetish of his glossy, glossy mane. It is not true that pride goeth before a fall, it goeth after. One of the biggest items in the newspaper was, of course, the space program. Entering capsule, astronaut Walter Schirra is helped into the Sigma 7 capsule this morning by his backup pilot, Leroy Cooper. Later, Schirra was boosted into his flight path for six orbits of the Earth. Prone to disagree. Here is the journal world photo by staff member Wilbur Hess that appears as the full page picture of the week 
in the latest issue of Life magazine. The photo first appeared in the journal World, August 27th, and the principal personality is Williamstown first grader Tommy Corter with his first day rebellion against education. Dear Ann Landers, My niece, who lives in another city, came to call on me yesterday. She brought her three-year-old daughter along. When I greeted them at the door, I tried to caress little Linda, but she pulled away and said, I don't like you. A few moments later, the child was climbing on the sofa and trying to remove the pictures from the wall. When she tired of that, she began to dig in the potted plants. All this time, her mother said nothing. In order to distract the child, I gave her some magazines to look at. When she proceeded to tear out the pages, I told her quietly that she mustn't do that, that the magazines were to look at and not to tear. The youngster became angry, threw the magazines all over the room, and shouted, You are a mean lady. I hate you. Her mother smiled at me apologetically and whispered, I hope you don't mind her saying these things. It is emotionally healthy for children to express themselves. I was nonplussed at this young mother's attitude. Is this the new style of child rearing? Signed, back number. Dear back number, no, in fact it's the old style which has been largely discarded in favor of a little emotional health and self-expression on the part of the parents. The idea that children should be permitted to do as they please and say what they wish was part of a bum experiment. Experts in the field now know that youngsters who grow up undisciplined and with no symbol of authority in the home sometimes wind up expressing themselves to the juvenile authorities. Mrs. Rebecca Harkness Keene was photographed for Vogue by Bert Stern. The picture was to display her starfish jewel with the world's largest pearl, designed by Salvador Dali. Stern asked her how she liked to model it, and Mrs. Keene said, I'll wear it on top. She changed into a leotard, strapped the jeweler around her ankle, and then posed standing on her head. At 9 a.m. tomorrow, see the bold, beautiful change in Buick. The new Buick Wildcat, the family size sports car with a nervous urge to get moving. Dashing front bucket seats, center console with lighted tack and stick selector for turbine drive. And the bold, beautiful Buick's LeSabre features advanced thrust engineering for greater road stability, flatter floor, chance of three transmissions including optional turbine drive, finned aluminum front brakes, world safest. Whoever wrote this review sure got it wrong. NBC's Tonight Show with Johnny Carson as its new pilot took off smoothly this week Johnny was agreeable, exhibited occasional flashes of gentle wit, and seemed poised and sure of himself. It is unfair to review a program of this type, largely spontaneous and depending heavily on the entertainment value of its guest stars, until it has had a few test flights. This viewer's initial reaction was that the show was so smooth and bland, the conversation so polite, and the commercials so all-encompassing that the program was hardly worth the sacrifice of a couple hours of sleep. But again, Carson must have a chance to get rolling. Hey, let's check the newspaper to see what's playing on the boob tube tonight. At 6.30, it's Wagon Train, followed by the Virginian. At 7.30, Dobie Gillis. 8, Perry Como. Or we could watch the Beverly Hillbillies. 8.30, Donna Reed. Or Dick Van Dyke. Or our man Higgins. At 9 o'clock, the 11th hour. Or the Naked City. Followed by news at 10.
Did you read the newspaper comics when you were a kid? Let me know in the comments below. Let's sample one. Here's Mutt and Jeff. That's the trouble with the present day housewives. They don't know how to economize. They waste food. Hmm? What's this for? The goldfish are hungry. They may as well eat while you're talking. Luncheon special. Four entrees, 95 cents to $1.20. Sunday buffet, $1.50, all you can eat. Hours daily, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. at the Dynamite. Hey, maybe after we read the paper, we'll load up the car and head to the movies. Let's see what's on. At the Sunset Drive-In Theater, so startling it had to be made in secret with the doors bolted, with the public kept out. The Couch, written by the master suspense author of Psycho. At the Grenada Theater, The 300 Spartans, Cinemascope Color by Deluxe. Now showing, everyone is flipping for Zots, the magic word for fun. Zots, starring Tom Poston, featuring Julia Mead, Jim Backus, Fred Clark, and Cecil Kellaway. Ooh, free Zots coins to the first 1,000. Tom Poston. Zots. Julia Mead. Zots. Jim Backus. Zots. Fred Clark. Zots. Cecil Kellaway. Zots. What's Zots? <laughs> well, if you've got Zots, you'll get the point. This is Professor Jonathan Jones, an ordinary, normal, everyday type absent-minded professor. Until he stumbles on a magic word that produces riotous results. Zots. What's zots? It's the hardest word in the world to explain. Well, sir, it's this power I have. Power? Uh, when you zots a dull after-dinner speaker, you liven him up by slowing him down. Yes, yes, Kedro. Very nice indeed, Abu. Thank you. When you throw a little zots into a party, it really starts to jump. Would you be interested in a method to immobilize, even destroy, as you choose, every living thing within range of vision, ships, tanks, planes? How do you intend to go about this? Uh, light rays, uh, sound vibrations, black magic? Yes. I'm a human weapon. Sucks. Plots to steal Zots land the professor in some hot spots. Zots! What Zots? It's the magic word for fun on land. Zots. Zots. At sea and in the air. Astronuts versus Martians. 
their newest and nuttiest, The Three Stooges in Orbit, also starring Carol Christensen. Here we go again. 